Hello and welcome to your practice. My name is Alicia and today I'm going to guide you through a yin class for your entire body. So the only equipment that we'll be using will be a bolster or some kind of firm pillow or rolled up towel or blanket and we won't need that until right near the end. So we'll just tuck it off to the side and I'll get you to start laying down on your back today. So coming all the way down into your version of Shavasana. I know not all bodies feel comfortable laying flat on your back. So maybe bending into the knees to support the curve in the spine would be an option for you just as we take a few breaths and get settled into the flow of the practice. So close your eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose and sigh everything out. Settling in first to the rhythms of your body. Noticing your breath. Noticing the heartbeat behind your breath. Noticing all the points of your body that are in contact with the floor. temperature of the air on your skin. Any emotions that might be floating around. Any thoughts that might be drifting through. Coming home to yourself within the practice. So letting go of what has happened and letting go of what is to come. And guiding all the parts of yourself back into the present, into the now. Letting everything slow down. And begin to deepen your breath. Lengthening out your inhales and your exhales equally. Filling up the lungs and the belly, breathing deep down into the pelvis, the full expression of an inhale and an exhale. And take the right foot to the right corner of your mat, extending your leg and then bring your left leg over to meet it and maybe to cross over top. Keep the breath nice and deep as the arms reach overhead and clasping for opposite elbows. Breathing some length into the left side of your body. And you may wish to drag your elbow package over towards the right a little bit more just to accentuate the curve in the left side of your body. And settling into this slow down pace of the practice. And just noticing what you notice and allowing whatever is there to just be. Letting everything that comes up be just an observation. And coming back through center, take the left leg out to the left and cross the right foot over top. You can take the elbows back through center if that's enough for you or you might start to guide the elbow package over towards the left side so you can broaden the right side of the body in this little side bend. Maintain these deep inhales and exhales. And 
coming all the way back through the center. We're gonna roll onto the right side of your body. Support your head in your hand. Take your left hand to your left ankle and with the bent right leg underneath for support, start to press your left hip flexor forward as you pull your left knee backwards. So very gently feeling the stretch, the expression in the front side of the body into the quads. And rather than trying to create space between your hip and your heel, which is sometimes the expression that we're looking for, try just to pull the knee backwards, keeping the heel tucked in and the hip pressing forward. and releasing the side and rolling on to the left side support your head in your left hand take the right hand to the right ankle and just start to pull the knee back as the right hip flexor goes forward nice deep breaths here and releasing this side roll onto the back and pull both of your knees in towards your chest give yourself a nice big hug a little rock and rolling side to side sometimes it's nice to pull the knees apart and make like little circles from this position good and we're gonna start to rock and roll the spine up and down. And this might not be appropriate for everybody, but what we're gonna do is just come all the way up to a hands and knees position. So you're gonna find tabletop, however it suits your body to get there. On an inhale, sink your belly down towards the floor, raise your gaze and your tailbone. Exhale to press away the floor around the spine and really press the floor so you could feel this, maybe a gentle stretch into the traps and moving between these two postures with your own breath and your own pace and your own level of activation, pressing the floor. And then moving into any part of the body that just feels good. So you might circle the ribs, you might sink the hips back. Good. And returning back to a neutral tabletop position. Now take your big toes together and take your knees quite wide apart. We're gonna settle the hips all the way back into the child's pose and start to crawl the hands out in front. Now I realize for a lot of people, the hips won't touch the heels and that's perfectly okay. So trying to relax through the inner thighs as much as you can. Letting the forehead feel grounded into the floor. It might feel nice to bring like a little bit of side to side rocking into this. And on a deep stretch, reach your fingers far forward and then exhale, take them over towards the right and trap down the right hand with the left so you can accentuate the left side body curve again here and take a deep breath into the left lung. Inhale, hands back through the middle. Exhale, take them over towards the left. Trap down the left hand with the right and take a big deep breath into the right lung. Good. 
slowly bring hands back through the center and take them over towards the right. This one, you're going to bend the left elbow to catch your head. And this might be enough for some of you here, but the main action here is we're going to drag the left elbow back towards your left knee. So you can kind of start to light up the, the lat muscle. And if you need more, you'll reach up the right hand and keep dragging back the left elbow. Of course, it doesn't move, but that's the traction on the floor. Nice deep breaths here. One more deep inhale. Exhale. Bring it all back to earth. Hands crawl through the center. And then bend and take it all the way to the left. Bend into the right elbow. Good. So option to stay like this, having that beautiful pulling back of the right elbow. And maybe if you need more, you'll reach up the left hand. So going pretty deep into the side body with this one. One more deep breath, inhale long, exhale, and take it back down to the floor. Good, coming back into the tabletop position, getting the knees under the hips, shoulders under the wrists. On an inhale, reach the right hand high to the sky. Exhale, scoop the right arm underneath the left, bring the right shoulder to the floor and your head to the floor. And then spider the left fingers into the ground so you can try to press your left shoulder on top of the right shoulder. And at the same time, reach the right hand away from your body and start to drag your hips over towards the right side of your mat. At the bottom of your next exhale, plant the left hand into the floor. Inhale, unravel, pick up the right fingers all the way. Exhale, put them back down. Inhale, sweep your left hand high. Exhale, scoop your arm under the right, drop the shoulder, spider the fingers in the floor, try to stack the right shoulder on top of the left. So we're rolling open the upper part of the torso and then drag your hips over to the left so you can lengthen out the twist. Bottom of the next exhale, plant the right hand at eye level. Inhale, unravel the left hand high. Exhale, plant it back down. Good. Take one more cat cow just to kind of clear the spine. Good. Now tucking under the toes, press your hips high, coming into downward facing dog. And the first one probably our only one today actually you can start to pedal your heels towards the floor and just lengthening out the backs of the legs the posterior chain kind of make all those movements that just feel nice in the body and don't really worry too much about staying in the parameter of the posture if something feels good just give a bend into that place in your body Take the gaze forward between the thumbs, glide your whole chest forward, and lower all the way down to the ground. Good. Knees can always come down to help you with any of those transitions. And bring the hands right under the shoulders and the tops of the feet into the floor. Inhale, press your chest up for cobra, and we'll pause here just for three breaths. And while we're here, tuck the elbows in towards the ribs. Drag the hands gently back towards the hips. Humble your chin gently towards your chest. 
and lower everything down. And stacking the elbows right underneath of the shoulders, plant the hands into the floor, and here roll the pubic bone down, just pressing pubic bone gently into the earth. Start to pull your heart forward. So this one might feel like some work in the arms, and that's okay. We're looking for spinal extension here, even though we often hear the word back bending associated with these curvy spine postures. Try to just find the length between the vertebrae rather than a sharp curve. And then keeping the general spacing here, plant the hands in the floor, pick your hips up. We're gonna bring the hips to stack right on top of the knees. Maybe the hands have to move back a little bit and then melt the forehead into the floor. And if you feel good here, you might look forward and press your chin and your chest down instead. And the heart melt pose, Anahastasana. One more deep inhale, filling up all the way. Exhale fully. And then start to glide your hips back, bringing the knees and the toes together this time into a child's pose. And this one you might drape your arms back beside you, curled up into a little ball. And letting the shoulders have a rest. And letting the back bend rebound over top of curve, the curve on the thighs. Good. Inhale, stretching the fingers forward all the way back up into our tabletop pose. So we're gonna take the right foot and step it forward between the thumbs. And you might not step it all the way up, you may need to pick it up and drag it up a little bit higher, but we're looking for spacing of ankle right underneath of me. So finding your way there. And then for some of us, we might have sensitivity in the bones. So if you do have that, you can just curve your mat over and take a little bit more padding underneath your knee if you need that. Good. So inhale, stretching forward here, lengthening through the spine, planting the left hand down onto the floor, pick up your right arm. This is going to be option one for a lot of people. If this is a beautiful stretch in your body and you feel a lot of pleasant sensation, I invite you to stay here. If you want to take this twist deeper, you're going to come up. Take your left elbow over top of the right knee and bring your palms together in front of your heart. So into your twisted lunge. And then for some of you, this might turn into a bind as well. So if you practice the bind, you can take that nice and tight. Good. Release your bind if you have it. Come back through center. S plant the right hand down on the floor and sidestep the right foot over quite a bit so there's lots of room for the shoulders inside. Plant the hands about big toe level onto the floor and start to drag them back towards you. So this will help to level your pelvis closer to the floor for your lizard.
And again, finding those long, deep breaths here. If you want to go deeper, you can just drop down onto the forearms or maybe use whatever pillow, blanket, bolster you might have gathered for yourself just underneath the elbows. And now we're going to change this one up a little bit. Flex your toes towards your shin and start to peel open your knee like you wanna see what's on the bottom of your foot on the floor. So this one should change the sensation inside of the hip quite a lot for everybody. Nice deep breaths here. We always want to stay back from that 100% sensation place. You want to go for the 50, for the 70, into a place where the breath can remain soft. You're not like striving or holding onto any tension. We want the body to feel safe. Inhale, coming up on your hands. And pick up your left knee from the floor. We're just gonna walk the hands to the center and pivot the right toes to match the left. Good, so sprinkle the fingers into the floor, find some length in the spine, and then on an exhale, hinge the hips, coming to a forward fold. Let everything just hang and be so heavy here. If you like a deeper expression, you can walk the hands back and just kind of traction yourself deeper. If your head's on the floor and you want more space, bring the feet closer together. And if this one's like a lot on the hamstrings, it's usually easier to have the feet a little bit apart, but feel free to keep a little bend in the knees here too. If that serves you better. Good, inhale, pressing up on the hands. We're gonna walk them all the way over to the left side to frame the left foot and drop the right knee down to the floor. Good. Plant the right hand down on the earth. Inhale, pick up your left hand. So we're back in this low lunge position, turning into the twisted lunge. And if you wanna stay here, this feels good, you stay here. If you wanna take it deeper, rising up, hook the right elbow over the left knee, Bring the palms together in front of your heart. And of course, if you prefer an even deeper expression and take the bind, feel free to go there. Nice long breaths in and out. Every inhale accentuating the length in the spine and every exhale trying to move into that space. You have your bind, begin to release. Everybody meet back with the right hand on the floor, then drop the left hand down to the floor. Sidestep the left foot out quite a bit, so we have lots of room for the shoulders. And then take your palms to about big toe level with the left foot and start to drag them back gently towards you, leveling the pelvis closer to the floor. And keeping the shin vertical just for the first breath, few breaths in this expression. If you need to go deeper, if you need more sensation, you'll come down to the elbows. Try to keep length in the spine. Try to keep that dragging back of whatever's on the floor. So if it's your forearms or your hands, keep pulling the pelvis closer to earth. And 
Nice deep breaths, nice free breaths. So it's easy to breathe here. It's easy to feel calm. Guiding us deeper into the parasympathetic nervous system. Right and now, changing the expression, flex the left toes up towards your left shin and start to open up the left knee like you want to look at what's on the bottom of your foot. Like that. Good. And just noticing how this posture feels different from side to side. And letting it be nothing more than an observation. There's no judgment. There's no trying to go as deep on one side as the other if they're uneven. And we just notice. Inhale, gently rising up out of here. I'm going to press yourself up, pivot both of the toes to the middle, and then heel toe the feet together. So we're going to point the toes out and the knees out, and they're about hip width apart. Start to settle the hips down for Malasana. So this one might be uncomfortable. You may want to sit on the pillow or bolster that you brought. You may want to pop up onto one or both of your toes because the heels don't easily reach the floor. But eventually, we're trying to reach the heels to the floor. So as long as there's no extreme sensation, extreme pain, I would encourage you to just explore that. And I like to press my elbows into my knees, kind of like widening the space a little bit more, but it also helps me to traction and get my spine a bit longer here. The gaze should be down. And that nice, gentle breath. The one that makes the body feel like it's in a safe place. Good, and very gently raising your hips up, taking the feet back apart. And we're gonna walk your hands to the top of the mat into that lunge position and wiggle the right foot over so that we can come into a pigeon position. So coming up nice and high just to begin and trying to guide the left hip forward and pull the right hip back, feeling the strength in the hips. And then from there, you can gently fold down coming into your one-legged pigeon. Stay present with the breath, with the sensation in your body. And just notice the places that the mind goes and then pull it back. Three more deep breaths here. And 
And slowly starting to press yourself up. Lean all the way into the right hip and then step your left leg over top of the right, pretzeling the legs. That might not be possible for everybody. So for some, you may straighten the right leg underneath and then the left leg is stepping over top still. So option one, it's a great big hug to the left knee and you'll feel the stretch into the left glute. Option two, spider the left fingers back and down. Inhale, pick up the right arm. Exhale, deep twist. And you can use the elbow to grow tall and to traction yourself deeper into the posture. Every breath in, grow taller. Every breath out, twist deeper. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, little counter twist, little, little dip, little bend to the right side. Good, and then taking the left leg all the way back. We'll step the right leg back as well. And then just sweep your left shin forward behind your wrist, setting up for a pigeon on the left side. So being tall, being strong, getting the hips nice and squared forward to begin and just feeling in the legs that you can support yourself upright first before coming down and letting that go and relaxing into the very passive form of this posture. And you might notice here as well that the hips are not completely the same and that's okay. It's just feedback. As you sink deeper into the posture and you inevitably come up against these walls of resistance within the posture, within the hip, see what you can do to dissolve them, to just breathe gently into them, to ask your body to let go if it can. a little bit at a time. Releasing the accumulation of stress and tension. And these things we collect in the body. Moving so carefully, begin to press yourself up and lean yourself all the way onto the left hip. The right leg will cross over top. Maybe the left leg goes straight underneath. Maybe it stays bent. Option one is a big hug to the right knee, pulling it in. Option two, spider the right fingers back and down behind you. Inhale, pick up the left arm. Exhale everything as you twist yourself in. No matter how tight you go in the twist, no matter how hard it becomes to breathe, you breathe anyway. And you tell your body it is safe. And letting this one go, come back through center. Exhale, gentle twist to the left. Back 
through center. And make sure that you have your bolster, your pillow, whatever it is close by. And roll all the way down to your back and catch both of your feet into your hands. So happy baby. This is one variation of happy baby. If it's impossible for you to reach your feet, just keep the knees bent and hang on to the ankles. Good. So finding your variation and then moving into it however you like. You might rock and roll a little side to side. You may play with straightening the legs. Whatever feels right, do that thing. Good. And then releasing this one, we'll find the bolster of the pillow and you're gonna place it right underneath of your hips. So bringing the feet in close enough that you can graze your ankles with the backs of your fingers and then leveling the pillow right underneath of the hips. So right at the hips and right under the sacrum, feel free to move it around if there's any pinching or kind of impingement feelings. We wanna be able to completely relax the hips down on top of this. And you might kind of roll the shoulder blades under you, like bringing the shoulders closer together. Humble the chin gently towards the chest to kind of lengthen out the back of the neck. Release everything that you're holding here. And feel the support. Feel the decompression in the low back. Relax your forehead and relax your jaw. Relax your abdomen. option to maintain this posture exactly as you are or option to stretch your heels up towards the sky in the waterfall pose and letting all the parts of yourself just come back together The next posture is Shavasana. So if you would prefer to stay here or in supported bridge, you can do that. Uh, some of you might like to just press your hips up high and move your bolster or blanket so that it'll come underneath of your knees and support the natural curve in the spine. Let the hands splay out to the sides. Rest everything so heavily. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Breathing in all the way deep down to the pelvis and letting it all go through parted lips. Release all the holding, all the grasping. Allow yourself to only be just as you are and know that you are perfect however you've arrived. Take your rest here as long as you need to. I'm always very grateful and very honored to be your teacher. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.